Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joseph from ScreenBite, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys something really cool. In fact, it's so cool that I scrapped the video that I was supposed to put out today, and I'm filming this video on the day it's going out. Uh, so because of this, I'm actually gonna be putting this into several parts, because I definitely want time to test it to make sure it 100% works before I say, go for it. So, as I grow older, I find myself wanting to be more and more mobile. Um, what I mean by this is I don't like sitting at my desk whenever I want to do video edits, scripting, or just what if I want to be out and about and I want to be able to handle all those things. Uh, so because of that, I've been looking into laptops that I could use on the go. Uh, and me personally, uh, I am a big fan of Mac OS. So while I have my fantastic PC gaming machine, I wanted something in the Mac ecosystem for video editing, mostly because I want to transition over to Final Cut Pro. But MacBooks are expensive, very, very expensive. And unless you're a huge YouTuber or you got a lot of money, can't really get a good one. So uh, I scratched that idea and put that on the back burner and started saving. But what is something that I do have? Well, if you remember a few weeks ago, I reviewed the iPad 2018 or the 6th gen iPad, and I bought that as my media consumption machine. Uh, allows me to be free in the house without having my phone in that tiny little screen. Um, but I did a little bit of research, and it turns out the iPad is a lot more powerful than I originally thought. Uh, powerful to the point to where you can record, edit, 4K, 10-bit, GH5 footage on it without any stutter. I know, it blew my mind too. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. This is gonna be a little awkward only because I don't have my overhead camera yet. So I'm off to the side and you guys are looking directly at the iPad, but let's see if we can make this work. So uh, first things first, do not make the mistake that I made. I bought this adapter, which is the USB 3 to Lightning, couldn't think of the name. SD card reader uh, or camera adapter. Basically, you can plug any USB into here. Um, however, um, it doesn't power it, so you actually have to plug it in uh, via lightning into the wall in order to get it to read off the USB. It's still a good adapter to have for other things, um, maybe like plugging in a microphone or something like that, uh, but for just bringing files into the iPad, it's a no-go. They do actually have an SD to lightning card reader. I plan on picking that up. Uh, that should solve this issue. Um, however, uh, that is not the only way that you can bring uh, files onto your iPad to edit. Um, now, before we even begin, I wanna let you know the app that we are going to be using is called LumaFusion. I just discovered this app yesterday uh, and it's actually absolutely fantastic. Um, like fantastic to the point to where it's pretty much a non-linear editor on an iPad, which was one of the main reasons why people don't edit video on an iPad is because they don't have all the tools that they need to put together an amazing video. Uh, LumaFusion changes this. Um, so we're actually gonna go ahead and close this out. Um, this was my test from earlier. Now bear with me, I am pretty much brand spanking new to this app. So I'm gonna struggle a little bit while navigating around it. So we're gonna make a new project and we're gonna call it Holy Cow. And I'm gonna set the frame rate to 24 frames per second, uh, which is something that you can't do on other editors, which is fantastic. And uh, for this video, I am gonna do 16 by nine aspect ratio. And just like that, it opens up a new product project. Now, this is what I thought was voodoo magic, and I have no idea how they do it. Uh, the first step of the voodoo magic, and that is that you can edit directly from iCloud or Google Drive. Uh, so the storage issues of having a 32 gigabyte 6th gen iPad, no longer an issue. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, actually bring in some clips. So to do that, you're gonna bring it up here, um, and I actually already imported some stuff um, so, um, I'm not going to go ahead and edit from the cloud for this video, but I am going to edit from what I imported. Uh, so I brought in a few clips. Uh, one is from a video that I shot for a client. Um, so we're going to go to photos, we're going to go into albums, I believe, and yep, under videos. 
So it's just gonna show all the videos that I already have on my device, um, but for the sake of this, we're gonna bring in these. I still don't know how to comfortably bring in stuff, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mess around like this. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, so this is actually a video that I was working on uh, to release for today, um, but I scrapped it for this video. Um, it's a video where I talk about my very first Android phone that I ever purchased. Uh, so leave a like on this video if that's something that you'd want to see. And at this point, my camera microphone decided to die. So welcome to post-production, Joe. Uh, so moving right along, um, basically this app writes like a full-blown NLE editor, and it's actually quite insane. Um, to the point where you can pretty much do a full YouTube video on your iPad with no need to go to your computer. So to bring it in, uh, you simply will just uh, drag and choose your in and out point, or if you have a keyboard, you can actually hit I and O, or pick these two little markers here. Uh, that's picture your in and out point. I'm gonna set it here. Then you just drag and drop it onto the timeline. Um, so just like that, you now have a video ready to record, and this is where things get insane. This is GH5 10-bit 422-4K footage in Vlog playing back natively. Now, you'll see that little error. That just means that it's not fully supported by iOS for this uh, type of file. However, I haven't run into any issues when it comes to actually playing it back yet. Keep in mind, I'm still pretty new to the application, but so far, so good. But the idea that it can play back smoothly blows my mind because my full-blown PC sometimes struggles with this. Uh, so let's go ahead and drag in another clip here. Uh, choose the in and out point. I think I'll choose it right about here and right about here. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and drag that in. And as you can see, uh, there are multiple tracks. So what we can either do is either one, well, crap, click that, yeah. One, either go ahead and crap. There we go. You can push this button and it'll go in or you can drag it down. And if you scroll over, you'll see that it's now on the timeline. Um, now, this isn't a big deal because apps like iMovie can do this without a problem at all. Uh, but we'll get to it why it's great in just a second. But as you can see, still plays back without an issue. This is not an iPad Pro, by the way, either. This is the 6th gen regular iPad doing this. It's insane. All right. And... Still, no issues with playback. This is pretty fantastic. Um, but as I was saying, um, this isn't a huge deal because iMovie can do this. So what makes this so great is that this is a track editor, just like Final Cut Pro or Adobe. So I can take this track, put up to three video tracks and up to three audio tracks, which is all you really need for something small like a YouTube video, really. And you can just edit. And I really, really love this app for this. All right, let's go ahead and test playback with multiple tracks of GH5 footage. And what is this voodoo magic? It is insane. Like it is playing back multiple tracks on an iPad. This literally is blowing my mind because I have no idea how it's doing this. Other, the only thing I can think of it is being that it's well coded for the iPad. But this is just amazing because it opens up a lot of opportunities uh, for being mobile. Uh, even for people who already have a, a laptop, this is way more portable to be out and about like if you're on set or you're out with a client. You could put together a rough edit and kind of show them how things are going. But this actually goes one step further. Uh, if you double tap on a clip, you actually can go into the settings of that clip and mess around with a bunch of different things, just like you could do on a full-blown NLE editor. Uh, so you can scale it, you can level it off, you can do pans, you can keyframe. There's a lot of options that you have built into LumaFusion, which is just incredible. Uh, so now this is one thing that I noticed while I was making this video. You have to make sure that you have your playbed in the right section because if you double tap, it'll sometimes show like the middle transition between the two clips. So you want to make sure you're on the clip that you want to mess around with. Um, and what I want to kind of show you next is that you can actually do a little bit of color grading here as well. And right here is where I noticed that my microphone was not working. So I went ahead and fixed it. Uh, let's go ahead and cut back. Sorry about that guys, I scared the crap out of myself because I thought I was recording this video with no sound. <laughs> Back to the video. Where was I? Yes, color grading. Uh, so, you can bring in LUTs, uh, this button right here. Unfortunately, I don't have any LUTs saved to my iCloud or 
my Google Drive yet. Um, but that is something that I will definitely test more extensively in an updated video to this. Uh, but um, you can do a little bit of light color grading on the side. Uh, so to do this, you first pick one of the presets that you have. Um, so they have a couple starting positions here. Honestly though, I'd never use these types of filters and stuff like that. I like to do everything from scratch myself. Uh, so I'm gonna click on original. And then it's gonna bring you up a ton, a well not a ton, but decent, decent color grading options. Now I will say this, this is nowhere near as powerful as something as DaVinci Resolve, of course, or even what you'd find in Premiere. Um, but this is an app that is actively in development. Um, so I can't see them not adding more features to this down the road. And the fact that this even exists in the first place blows my mind. So uh, let's go ahead and um, mess around with this image. Um, so this was shot in Vlog, um, so it's extremely flat and I wanna add a little bit of color to it. Um, so I normally don't do it this way, um, but what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do here is actually add some contrast, saturation, and vibrance to bring the video back. Uh, normally I would first transcode this, or not transcode this, sorry, convert this to Rec. 709 and then edit from there. But, like I said, don't have any LUTs currently saved in my iCloud. So let's go ahead and do a, a rough edit here. Uh, so we're gonna bring in some contrast. We are going to bump up the saturation a little bit as well as bring in just a touch of vibrance. Uh, now the issue with this is that it has the contrast that we need, but it's a little bit orange, I would say. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring back the highlights a little bit maybe bring up the shadows, and we're gonna remove some of the reds, add some magenta to get rid of that green cast, uh, and bring in a little bit of the blues here. Maybe mess with the gamma, and the hue. Ooh, nope, don't wanna mess with the hue. All right, cool. <laughs> and that's pretty much, I think, as good as we're gonna be able to get that for now. So. Um, Go back to the edit, it's already applied, and watch this. This is where it gets crazy. It's still silky smooth playback. What is going on right now? This is insane. Oh, wait, hold up. Hold the phone. Did I speak too soon? Aha, I caught it. <laughs> so I spoke too soon. Uh, so I think that this has everything to do with the fact that the GH5 files aren't fully compatible with the iPad. Now this is saddening, but it's not crazy saddening because what you could always do is first transcode this footage into something that's more manageable from the iPad and then edit from there. But you can do some light color grading and actually, I think if you just let it render a little bit, it'll start working. Yeah, okay, so it's still a little choppy. That sucks. Once again, not gonna knock it too much. But uh, what, before we cut this video short, um, or cut this video off for this first part, uh, I wanted to show you one additional feature here, and that is that you can copy this color grade. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is copy our attributes, and then we're gonna go back, click on this first clip here, Make sure your playbed head's in the right position. Uh, click on your clipboard again, and just hit paste. You can choose what you want copied over from these sections down here. Uh, I'm just gonna hit paste, and it copied over the grade. So, let's see how this first clip plays. Interesting, so the first clip actually plays without any problem. So maybe it has something to do with the fact that it's reading the multiple layers. So let's go ahead and try cutting this back and cutting this forward. Does that help it? Oh, and let's add this to here while we're at it. Don't know if you guys can hear that, but that is Princess Bab Bizzles, whatever the heck we're calling her, and she is singing the song of her people. So let's go ahead and hit paste. There we go. 
And now my color grade is over all the clips. Let's double click it to make it full screen and let's see if the magic works. So it definitely has a little bit of stutter. But yeah, that seems to have fixed the issue. Uh, so when it comes to color grading GH5 4K footage that's 10-bit and layering it on top of each other, you are gonna run into that problem of choppiness unless you transcode first. However, if you are a little bit neater with your edits and you cut out the pieces where it's not gonna be layered, where it's not layered like that, it actually plays pretty darn well. Um, but yeah, this is something that's super cool to me. Um, I know I'm probably geeking out on you guys a little bit too much, but this is something that I just had to share. Um, now to export it, I haven't done that yet, um, but I believe you would just click this button here. Yep, and you can share it as a movie, snapshot. Oh, what? Okay, so you can actually even do um, frame grabs for like thumbnails and stuff like that. I did not know that, that is cool. Um, and I guess this would be all the projects that I've worked on so far. But um, So we could click on movie, I guess. And yep, okay, so I can actually upload it directly to Google Drive, I can upload it directly to YouTube, tons of export options. I definitely plan on playing with this a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, I definitely plan on playing with this a little bit more in the future and bringing a more fully fleshed out video. Like I said, this is your first time experiencing it with me, um, but this is really, really cool and I can't wait to see what kind of possibilities that we have. So I don't know about you guys, but that blew my mind. I did not think that a tablet, especially an iPad, which is not even the Pro Edition, would be that powerful. Um, and that's gonna be part one. Uh, the next steps for my little experiment here is I'm actually gonna get uh, this bridge keyboard case, uh, which pretty much turns it into a MacBook. Um, so keep a lookout for that, that's gonna be coming soon. And then finally, I think what I'll do is I'll compare editing on the iPad to editing on my computer, and we'll see just how powerful each one is and which one's better. But stay tuned for that, and if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video, guys, so thank you once again for watching. As always, if you liked it, make sure to show it by hitting that like button down below. It really helps me out. As well as if you are new to the channel and you like the content, feel free to subscribe. Also, if you have any questions about what I talked about today, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. You can also ask me any questions on Twitter, at ScreenBite. But until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.